So, quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, okay? Um, now, there is a way you can derive this formula using completing the square to get this. So, um, I think I made an extra credit on one of, the, one of my tests back in the day, but you can show step by step how to get this formula using completing the square. But you don't have to do it. As yeah, as yeah, it. The only, I mean, the only thing you're required to do is to know the formula. Now, you don't have to memorize it. So on a test or in your homework, you can use this. I'm going to give it to you. But um, cool kids are, um, are memorizing it. That's what I heard anyway. And I'm a cool kid. So here's the quadratic formula. The first part of lesson 65 shows you how to derive it using completing the square. We're gonna skip all that. And we're just gonna move into example one. So you can find X as long as you know what A, B, and C are. Do you remember how to find A, B, and C in a quadratic equation? Can someone explain that to me? Okay. Well, this is the quadratic equation the bit standard form is a x squared plus bx plus c so a is the coefficient of the x squared term and if there's not a number there then it's just one b is the coefficient of the x term and c is the constant that's it okay so that's your a b and c so let's do example one plug it into this formula and give me an answer 5x squared plus 34x minus 7 equals 0. Solve for x. So it's some math, but you do it. And then after you do the math and work hard to deserve it. I just use that thingy, the bottom one. The, <laughs> the middle of the board. Up, yeah. Completing the square. Oh, you like that? I mean, is that your favorite? No, not really. <laughs> um, if you do a couple of these, this will become your favorite. Okay, because it takes, it's just math. It's just putting it in. You don't have to remember steps. You just have to plug and chug. You just plug in A for 5 for A, 34 for B, and negative 7 for C. Right, negative 7 for C, not positive 7. And then you just divide 34 by 2 and square it or something. No. Well, whatever you get here, you're going to get two answers, right? Because you're going to add neg negative 5 or negative 34 to this and subtract negative 34 from or minus this because it's plus or minus. So whatever you get here, take the square root of. So And it is a, a pretty answer. It's, it's something that's square rootable, right? Something that's square rootable, so that's good. But sometimes it's not, and you have to leave it as a radical. But this one is. You get a fraction, and you get an integer. Okay? As your answer. You get two answers. X equals blah and blah. And they're, and they're, one's a fraction, one's a negative integer. Okay, you got it? You're not doing it? I did. I got to the half square of 34 and I got 17. I don't know what to do with Square of 34? I mean, not square, divided by two. I got 17 and I don't know where it put Yeah, so that 34, that's that's a little brutal because you have to square that, you know, so that's, that's kind of a bummer, but you could do it. Just use your calculator. And then after you show me you can do it, I'm gonna I'm gonna 
make your life easier. Got it. Who's got it? Oh, that's one over five. Okay, that's one of them. Yeah. Okay, and the other one is a negative integer. <clears throat> one over five is one of them. You guys just giving up on life? Yeah. I gave up a bit ago. What? I gave up a bit ago. Yeah. yeah. If I'm being honest, I gave up after freshman year. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually being honest, though. Freshman year was the highlight of my life. Thank you for your honesty. Your honesty doesn't get you into the honor role. Ooh, actually, it did last year, 4.0. Well, you're clearly trying. Well, honesty alone doesn't. So you're still working a little harder at the last year. <laughs> That's what my dad said. <laughs> did you get the other one, Drew? <laughs> Negative seven. Nice. Good job. All right. <clears throat> Delaney, did you get anywhere with yours? Nope. I tried. All right, Drew. Re rewarding your persistence. Free problem set for you. I should have given it out. Did you try it? Did you guys try it? I tried it. All right, I'm going to give you flag attack points. I divided. I'm going to take away four. eight flag, flag attack points from Gmo and Amy. Just kidding. I'm not. But I should. You should. Honestly. Oh, I can't remember what I just erased. Kira. So oh. I gave you more than I think that you had. Great. I have how do, I have a question. How oh, do I didn't know, know that I, people's grades are on here. Wait, what Oops. is that number? It's fine. I'm not sure. It's all good. I'm going to see my 105. <laughs> <laughs> you got a one. Yeah, Mr. Flack, one of them. how do I know if I have three problem sets? I don't know where to find that. It's like on right here. It's in like three the three participation area. Sets. Oh, it is? It's like, um, like, you know, so I just gave you two points to land in. Wait, is it five flag attacks? Is one? Yeah. Yeah. So like if you have a hundred and five out of a hundred under the participation order. Okay. Like it's a good grade. Okay. Then that's okay. 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 Thank so <clears throat> now I'm gonna make your life easier. For those of you who earned it. So this is a this is an app that you can you can find any app, but here is uh, this is what my app looks like. See that little green? It says quad quadratic. So uh, on this, it's called quadratic. I'm going to maybe I should just share this instead of the other one. Not that we don't want to hear your voice, but. <laughs> Okay. All right. So I'm going to share this one. I'm going to share this screen here. One second. Okay. Can you see this? So, and I'll do it here so you guys can see it. So basically this is my, uh, Oh, you're so cute, little Apple TV who can't do his job. Do your job. I think I found it. What'd you get? Anyway, 
we're not going to do that. So I'll just share my camera. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, <laughs> Okay, so this is what the dumb thing looks like, okay? So here's here's the quadratic, and all I'm doing is just plugging in A, which is 5, B, which is 34, and C, which is negative 7. And then I just hit solve equation, and there's my answers. You can't see them, but whatever. So uh, but it, it's just an app. There's an app for that, right? There's an app for the quadratic formula. All you have to do is figure out what A, B, and C are, plug it in, and it spits it out. Yes. So would we not have to show our work if we were to do that? Never actually. Um, well, on a test, you never have to show your work, but if you get it wrong, then it's completely wrong. But if you show me a little bit of this where you go well, if I show X equals work, you negative. Give me the answer, so. If you, for some reason, get it wrong, then you're screwed, okay? Minus 4AC all over 2A. So this is what you're plugging in. This is what the app will do for you, okay? So that's X equals negative 34 plus or minus this big number here. Let's see here. The determinant. So the, uh, we'll talk about the determinant later. 34 squared is 1156 minus, but when you're subtracting a negative, what is that? Uh, 140. So add 140. And then I can take the square root of 1296. It is just 36. All over 10. Okay, so then you get negative 34 plus or minus 36 all over 10. So plus 36 would be two over 10. Minus 36 would be negative 70 over 10. Okay, so that's one fifth or negative, <coughs> not, yeah, negative seven. Okay, so when you do the math, that's what you get. So if you wanna just plug in the numbers here, guys, Plug in the numbers on the quadratic formula and then put it in your app. Then that's showing your work, okay. right? Because I'm, you can't show your work that you do on your calculator, okay? So if you show me that you know what formula to put it in, then that can that's considered showing your work, okay? Quick question: How do you get thirty-six? Like it's negative thirty-four plus or minus thirty-six. How do you get thirty-six? Um, because it's basically 34 squared is a really big number minus negative 140. Yeah, because that all adds up to 1,200. Uh, yeah, so the square root, the square root of 12. Root of yeah, square okay. root of 1296 is 36. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's try one, um, a different kind of one. This is 1B. This is 9x squared plus 6x plus 1 equals 0. Solve for x. So if I plug this in, here's what happens. I get negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 4ac, so 36, all over 2a, so 18. So you get 0. You get 0. What happens when you plus or minus 0? That cancels, right? <clears throat> so you get negative six over 18, which is only one answer, negative one third, okay? But technically, um, if we were to solve this by factoring, um, it would be a square trinomial because this is technically a square trinomial. This is three X plus one times three X plus one. So you have the one answer, but it, we call it a multiplicity of two. Okay, so multiplicity of two. You don't have to do this right now, but just know that, yeah, it's just one answer, but since it's a quadratic, there, we need two answers technically, so it has a multiplicity of two. 
Okay, um, so that's another scenario that you might run into. Here's the scenario that you would probably run into more than anything, because if it's my, my sol quadratic solving method of choice is factoring, because I like to factor, and if it's factorable, then you just gotta get it down to parentheses and figure out what makes zero, right? But if it's not factorable, then you either have to use completing the square or the quadratic formula. So if it's not factorable, I usually don't do completing the square. I just do the quadratic formula. So this is what you'll get most of the time. Here's example 2a, um, 3x squared plus 5x plus 4. Okay, so let's just plug it into our formula. X equals, what's B, what's A, B, and C? Three, five, and four. So negative B would be negative five, plus or minus the square root of B squared. So 25 minus four times three times four, all over two times three. See what I did? I just plugged it in. So now let's figure it out. Negative five plus or minus. Wait, five. Yep. Is this 25 supposed to be squared? Yep. Well, five is squared to get 25. Yeah, I just didn't write it out first. I just did it. Okay, b squared minus 4ac. So that's 25 minus 48. Uh-oh, what does that mean? What's going to happen? So that's negative 23. What's the square root of negative 23? <laughs> It's, a, it's an imaginary number, right? Yeah. But 23 is easy because there's nothing square about that. So you can leave that in there. Just take the negative sign out and that becomes a what? An I or whatever. An I. So you get negative five plus or minus square root of 23 and then I all over six. But here's the deal. You can't keep your answer like that. Here's why. You're mixing the, re the real with the imaginary. So you have to separate these two things. So this becomes negative 5 over 6 plus or minus square root of 23i over 6. Or you could just say square, square root of 23 over 6i. Same thing. Didn't you say that uh, real and imaginary numbers, the same number is a complex number? Yeah. So now it's in, this is a complex number. This is not. This is, this is, this is not okay. You have to separate your real and imaginary. So keep the real separate and your imaginary separate. So if it's this, they're both divided by six, you have to actually divide them both by six. Oh, because they're different terms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, this is technically right. It's just not grammatically correct because you have to keep your real and imaginary separate. So divide them both by six. If you can't divide them by six, just at least try to reduce the fraction. If you can't reduce it, then you're done. Okay. So this is two answers. Um, if you were taking this class online, we don't have a symbol for plus or minus. So basically you have to write negative five, six plus radical 23 over six, I comma negative five, six minus radical 23 over six. Plus sign and then slash minus, would yeah. that be easier? Yeah, it could be, but um, that's not what most classes are doing. Uh, you have to write it out with a copy with your two solutions. You have to, the computer needs to know that you're wanting to give two different solutions. Okay. So there's not much else to this. There's a quick way to, to determine whether you're going to have a nice, pretty number, whether you're going to have one solution. Remember, your one solution happened when you ended up with zero in the radical. So basically, if b squared minus 4ac equals zero, then you're just going to have one solution. It's going to be nice because it's not going to be a radical in it, but it's one solution. Okay, uh, we're going to talk about that later. That's basically um, called the determinant, or is it the discriminant? What's the movie? Which which one's the movie? Discriminant or determinant? Determinant. Um, divergent. Divergent. Yeah. Determinant. Determinant. There's actually one. Uh, 
an unwritten book in that series called like Determinant, Determinant or something. They never finished that movie series. There's supposed to be another book and she was supposed to die. I never finished it. Ooh. In Divergent, she's supposed to die. Yeah, she, was, she died in the last book I read the whole series. Okay. Um, I hate her eyes, so okay. I don't know. So. Yeah. But he so was James 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 James. James. fine. He was hot. Okay, we're moving on. Okay. Oh, God. Okay. Um, so 66. Okay, so this is now we're moving to solving polynomial equations, which technically a quadratic equation is a polynomial equation. Solve poly EQs. Okay, so let's just start with one. And this is one way to do it. And I'm always looking for this first. Okay, so how do we, what's the first step? What do you guys want to do? We could right now, um, if this was a quadratic, put it in the quadratic formula, but it's not quadratic now because. There's a four right there. Yeah. Can't you just take out two X from each of them? Two X squared. You can oh, yeah, take, yes, you can take out a two X from, from both of them. Well, two X. Yeah, don't you make two X Yep. Okay. Okay, so then if you take out a 2x squared, you're left with this. 2x squared, and then you're left with x squared minus 5x um, minus 36 equals 0. So far, so good? Yeah. All right, and then look, this is factorable. Can you see it? How does it factor? What adds to get 5x, what multiplies to get negative Yep. What is it? I have no idea. So Come on. Five, I spent about five minutes just figuring this out. It has to be a positive and a negative. Uh-huh. Yeah. Positive and a negative. Um, and the negative nine. needs to be bigger, right? Because yeah. when you add it, it's got to end up negative with a negative. Nine, four. Negative nine, positive four. Good. Nine times four equals 36, uh -huh. but nine plus or minus five, four is five. Okay. okay. So what are our X's? Um, positive nine. Okay. Negative and negative. No, no, no. It's asking fractions. Oh, oh yeah, negative four. That's right. Oh, what about this? Right. What about this? Is that one the fraction? Now this is still a factor, so you can, if you don't, if this confuses you, set them all to zero. So two x squared equals zero. What does x have to be? X plus four equals zero. What does x have to be? X minus nine equals zero. What does x have to be? X equals negative four. X equals nine. What is X here? A fraction. Divide by two and you get X squared equals zero. So what's X? Nine. Nine. <laughs> square root both sides. Keep going if you want. What's the square root of zero? Zero. So X equals zero. Okay. So anytime X itself is a factor, see how X is not a factor here. The factor is X plus four. But whenever x by itself is a factor, then one of your solutions is zero. Now, technically, this is zero, but this has a multiplicity of two. Because look, there's two x's, it's x and another x. So both of those are zero. But you don't have to write that for now. Right now, this is your solution. The solutions are this, okay? So whenever you have x outside, if you factored out an x or something, then one of those solutions is gonna be zero, okay? Now, the cool thing about factoring out a GCF is that if I divided both sides by two, what's zero divided by two? That, that you could divide by any number and it doesn't change the solution, <laughs> okay? So that's, so you could just take out a two, but really you don't need that two in there at all. You divide everything by two and it goes away. Now you can't divide by x squared 
because zero divided by x squared is a little sketchy because x could be, if x is zero, then you can't do that. Okay. Um, so let's do 1b. See if you can do this one. 4x cubed plus x equals 4x squared. So I'd like to solve this by factoring. I think we can, so go for it. All right. So if you uh, are confused, steps to solve equations by factoring, middle, middle box. Can I just, can I, um, it's called. <laughs> and this is factorable. You're going to end up with um, a couple of fractional answers, but it is factorable. So Silas, you're um, paying attention. You could, if you wanted to answer this, you could put your answer in the chat. Okay, should we move in? Ready? I got stuck. So. Okay, where'd you get stuck? What'd you do so far? So, we already know I'm not the smartest, so don't make fun of me. Okay, so 4x cubed minus some stuff. Oh, I forgot to pause one. Okay, now. Uh, a, a negative or a positive? Um, it'd be two negatives. Because two negatives multiply to get yeah. that, but add to get that. But it's not the simple question that one multiplies to get one and adds to get negative four because of that. Yeah, so what times what equals 4x squared? Let's try the obvious one 2x and 2x. Okay, and then obviously there's only thing that e one thing that equals positive one if they're both negative minus one minus one, right? So now when you foil it out, 4x squared, and then you get negative 2x and another negative 2x, which combine to negative. So the magic question doesn't work nice when there's a coefficient. It, it, it's, there's still a question, but it's confusing. What two numbers multiply to get one and add to get negative four after you multiply the both factors by two? That makes it confusing. Okay, so what are our solutions? Well, what's this? Zero. zero. So remember when x is a factor by itself, it's just zero. Okay, now what about this one? They're both the same. Positive one would give you not a zero, but a one, because two times one is two minus one is one. You want to get zero, one half. So if you're confused, just write a separate equation over here. 2x minus 1 equals 0. Solve. Add 1 to both sides. 2x equals 1. Divide by 2. x equals 1 half. The shortcut, remember, is opposite of that, which you guys know. This number over that number. The shortcut works here, too. Opposite of this, this number over this number. Or negative 4 over 1 is negative 4. But you don't have to use the shortcut there because you already know that. Okay, now is this it? Should is this are these my solutions? Just two? Well, technically there should be three, three solutions. So what else do I say? Just Multiplicity of two there. Because there's two factors that look like that. Okay? So there's two instances of one half. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. So 
technically we only wrote two numbers, but we wrote three solutions because this is like one half times two or multiplicity of two. Okay, so that's the next, um, you could, that's the next topic is identifying multiplicity. And then after this, there's a couple theorems. So I'm gonna show you these theorems. Um, you don't have to write them down, but I'm gonna write them down so you have them. This is called the rational root theorem. Okay, I think we're reaching the point where I started doing these lessons online. This is how far we got in COVID hit last year. So, um, I might post these lessons instead, but I'll have to check into that. Rational root theorem. Um, here's what it says. If a polynomial, P of X, if polynomial, we'll call it P of X, has integer coefficients, then every rational root of P of X equals zero. This is confusing worded like this, um, but we'll do some examples. P of X equals zero can be written in the form P over Q where P is a factor of the constant term and Q is the factor of the leading coefficient. Okay, so basically the shortcut, one over two, where P is a factor of constant term and Q is the factor Boy, this is just a waste of time right here. Q is a factor of the leading coefficient. That's a lot of words. Of P of X. Okay. All right, so here's the deal. Um, in this specific polynomial, here's P of X equals zero. So P of X is 4X cubed minus 4X squared plus X. So every... Rational root, so rational root are like zero and one half, um, can be written in the form P over Q, where P is a factor of the constant term. So P is a factor of the constant term. So what are the factors of X? Just one, right? So P are factors of the constant term, and Q is a factor of the leading coefficient, the four. So one over two is a factor because two is a factor of four, okay? Um, let me do another example. Uh, there's one more theorem. And I'm just, I'll just put it up here, but irrational root theorem. Hey, if you're not gonna pay attention, just pretend like you are. The whispering in the back is distracting. So if a polynomial P of X has rational coefficients, if P of X, same polynomial, has rational coefficients, okay, and A plus B ra uh, radical C is a root, of P of X equals zero, where A and B are rational and radical C is irrational. Then A minus B radical C is also a root. 
That's basically, it's plus or minus. Okay, done with that. Let's go into an example that would, will help you make sense of this. Okay, here's example three A. Identify all the real roots of this. So here's a polynomial, x cubed minus two x squared, x cubed minus two x squared, um, minus 11 x plus 12 equals zero. Okay, so I need to identify all the rational roots or all the real roots is what it says, okay? So here's the deal. P is a factor of the constant term. Okay, what are the factors of 12? Factors of 12. And then Q are the factors of one, right? Because that's the leading coefficient. So it's the factors of this over the factors of this. There's a bunch of different combinations. So P could be um, plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, plus or minus four, plus or minus six, plus or minus 12, all over plus or minus one. So all the factors, positive and negative of 12, and all the factors of one. So how many different solution possible factors do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six times two. So there's 12 different possibilities, okay? Um, now over plus or minus one, we could probably just forget about that because it's all gonna be included there. When you divide by one, it stays the same. When you divide by negative one, it's the other alternative. So there's 12 different possibilities. Okay, so we're going to try one. So this is how we're going to try it. We're going to see if um, like one is a factor of this. How do we see if one is a factor? Synthetic division. One, negative two, negative 11, 12. Bring down the first one, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, and boom. So we, now we know a factor. One is a, is a root. So that means, so therefore, x minus one is a factor. Right? If one is a solution, x minus one is the factor. Right? Okay, so if x minus one is a factor, now we have one of the factors. So then we have x minus one times like this bigger thing equals zero. How do we find that bigger thing? Well, it has to equal all that, right? So now we're gonna divide this. Um, so we're gonna, yeah, we're just gonna factor out that. So here's what we're left with, look. So that means x squared minus x minus 12, that all equals this. See what we did? Since this has no remainder, then these two, we not only know one factor now, we know two. Because when you divide that factor, you get this. So now we have two, but look, this can be factored again. So now we have x minus one, x minus four, x minus three equals zero. So my solutions are one, three, and four. Okay, so. Basically, we just had to guess which number was a root, okay? But this theorem made it a little, narrowed down the possibilities to 12 different possibilities, okay? So you just have to go through this list until you find one that works. So you can try one, you can try negative one, you can try two, you can try negative two. But these are the only, it's got to come out of this group. There's only 12 possibilities of solutions. Now we ended up with three, but we could have picked three and divided by three and we would have gotten another um, 
trinomial that we could have factored and got one and four. So we've got x minus one, x minus four. Okay, so that's a little complicated. But let's try one more example. And then uh, that'll be it for the day. Okay. So remember, it's p over x. p is the factors of this, and or q, and q is the leading co factors of that leading coefficient. So let's walk through this together. You guys walk me through it. So here's example 3b. And I want to factor this. 3x to the fourth minus 5x cubed minus 29x squared plus 3x plus 4. Okay, so what are all our different possibilities of roots? So what's P and what's Q? Not three, the factors of four. Oh, so plus or minus one, plus or minus two, and just plus or minus four, right? Those are the only factors of four. Now what's Q? Yep. Yep. So plus or minus one or plus or minus three. Okay. So here's the deal. Here's what we end up with. Plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four. And then all this divided by three, which is plus or minus one third, plus or minus two thirds, plus or minus four thirds. <laughs> okay. Those are all the different possibilities of the P's and Q's. Okay, so which one do you want to try? It's not going to be all of them. It's only going to be four of them. It could be three with one of them has a multiplicity of two. There's only going to be four of these one, two, three, four, five, six times two, 12 different possibilities. All right, so we can try one. Let's just try one. Um, if I do one, then I get three, negative five, negative 29, three, and four. So three, two, negative 31, three, negative 32, negative 33, negative 28. That doesn't work. One doesn't work, right? Because you end up with the remainder. So one is not a root. Let's try another one. Um, I'm going to try one that I know is one. <laughs> I'm going to try one third. Okay. So one third goes on the outside, synthetic division. Um, and then we just multiply. Three times one third is one. And you get negative four. So then you go uh, negative four thirds here. And then you have to add those. So you get like 30 and a third, which is crazy ugly. Oh, wait, no, here's what I want to try. I want to try negative one first. <laughs> That'll be easier. So then you get negative one, and then you get negative six. Okay, multiply by negative one third, you get positive uh, two. And then add those together, you get negative 27. Multiply, you get positive nine. Add, you get 12, multiply, you get negative four, comes down zero, boom. So one, negative one third is a factor, and so is this. So here's what we're left with. How do you say x, how do you say negative one third is a root? So x minus, or x plus something, but it's not x plus something, it's actually three x plus one. Remember the shortcut, this num opposite of this, this number over that number. And then you're left with three X cubed minus six X squared minus 27 X plus 12. Okay, so these are our factors so far, but then look at this. This is a polynomial, it's not a quadratic, so we can't factor it, we can't do anything. So we have to do the same thing. We have to find all of our different possibilities of that. Okay. Um, I think I would have, 
So three, seven. Okay, let's, let me, let me make it. So let's say four. I know that four is a factor. So it's still, you still go out of this list. Okay, so you check that off, that's good. So four goes into this, so let's see. Into three, negative six, negative 27, and 12. So three times four is 12, and then you get six, that's four is 24. Um, something's wrong. Negative three times four is negative 12, zero. Okay, so here's another factor. All right, so now we know that 3x plus 1 was that factor, but also x minus 4 is a factor now. And also 3x squared plus 6x minus 3 is also a factor. Okay, so this one, this means anything over 2, that's how many times you're going to have to go through that process. Okay, unless you get lucky and you find a greatest common factor, then you can factor out the x's and stuff like that first. Okay, so this factors nicely. This is 3x plus 1, x minus 4. And let's see, that's got to be 3x and x. Can anyone figure it out? So this has got to be 3. No, this has got to be 3, 1. And then this one has to be doesn't work. What am I doing on here? Oh, yeah, it's it's not factorable. <laughs> so then you have the, just this part. You can either use the Pythagorean theorem or completing, or not Pythagorean theorem, quadratic formula or the, or the uh, so here's what ends up. If you do this, negative B plus or minus, blah, blah, blah. Then you get these as factors. So you get X equals negative one third, which you already knew, you already know four is. And then you get these irrational roots, negative one plus or minus, radical two. Okay, so there's four different answers here because of that plus or minus. So technically I should write it negative one third, four, negative one plus radical two, comma, negative one minus radical two. That was a process. We will not have a test like this with a problem like this on there. But as long as you know how to find the different possibilities, you don't have to do this. This is just a shortcut. You could try to guess to see what X would work. Now, in this case, it would have been kind of easy to just start with one because one was actually a factor because one minus two is negative one, minus 11 is negative 12 plus 12. So one is a factor. So, but this is just a limits your possible answers to 12 different answers, okay? All right. Um, that's all I'm going to say today. Uh, your homework would, will help you, you know, practice these concepts for sure. But um, that's it. Black math. Give me some math and I'll give you some flack. Black math.